Okay, in this video, we're going to look at some basic concepts in deductive logic. Uh, so first of all, um, this is a really useful word to have is uh, IFF, which is an abbreviation for uh, if and only if. This is pronounced if. Um, this is not generally accepted as a word in the English language, but it should be because it's really, really handy to have. It's uh, far more precise than, you know, what people usually do, like it's a standard practice in uh, mathematics and a lot of other areas, is to just use if when, like if, when what you actually mean is if and only if. But, you know, in the interest of precision, right, we will avoid that. Um, so the first concept that we'll look at is deductive validity. Right, so an argument is deductively valid if, if and only if, right? It's not possible for the premises of, of the argument to be true, but the conclusion be false. So if the premises of the argument are all true, then the conclusion also has to be true, right? You can't have the premises all being true and the conclusion being false. And if the argument is not deductively valid, then it's invalid. Uh, so for example, Right, all dogs are mammals, all mammals have hair, therefore all dogs have hair. Remember that these are, you remember from the last video, right, these are arguments in standard form, right? These are the premises here listed at the top, and then you have the solid line and then the conclusion underneath. Anyway, to go back to this, right, this here, this is a valid argument, right? If it's true that all dogs are mammals and it's true that all mammals have hair, then it must be true that all dogs have hair, right? It's not possible for this to be false if these are true. Um, over here, right, all dogs are mammals, all cats are mammals, therefore all dogs are cats. This is invalid, right? Well, I mean, in the real world, right, both premises are true, that's false. So you know that it's possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. Um, an argument is sound, then, if it's deductively valid and the premises are all true. Um, and then if it's not sound, it's referred to as unsound. Uh, sound arguments, so if you're interested in like ordinary language arguments or um, arguments in the sense of uh, arguments for the purpose of persuading people, particularly, or convincing people, then what you're primarily interested in are going to be sound arguments. And the reason is that if you have a sound argument, the conclusion, the conclusion has to be true, right? Because it's deductively valid, if the premises are all true, the conclusion has to be true, and the premises are all true, follows from that conclusion has to be true. Um, we are actually not, in this course, not particularly interested in soundness. And the reason is, I mean, it's this, right? Whether the premises are true, by and large, we're just not concerned with that. I mean, by and large, that's, that's an issue for other departments. You know, they're the ones who are concerned with whether the data is actually correct, whether it's accurate. We don't worry about that. We just worry about you know, whether the inferences that you're drawing from the data are correctly drawn or not. Um, but anyway, here, so here you have some examples. Uh, all dogs are mammals, all mammals have hair, therefore all dogs have hair. This is a sound argument. Uh, both premises are true, therefore the conclusion has to be true. All dogs are fish, all fish have wings, All dog, therefore all dogs have wings. Um, this is valid, right? Like if those premises were true, the conclusion would have to be true but both of the premises are false. So the argument is unsound. Um, okay, entailment. A set of sentences logically entails a sentence if it's impossible for all the members of the set to be true and that sentence be false. Uh, so all dogs are mammals, all mammals have hair, that entails all dogs have hair. All dogs are fish, all fish have wings, two plus two equals four, I am wearing shoes, this entails all dogs have wings. Um, notice that um, adding more, so, I mean, this set, if you just had the set consisting of all dogs are fish, all fish have wings, that would entail all dogs have wings. Um, adding additional members to the set does not change what it entails. Um, entailment is a, a more general form of validity. Um, what make or an argument is deductively valid if the set of the premises logically entails the conclusion. Um, so, uh, yeah, logical entailment is more general than uh, than validity, right? It it applies anytime you have a pair of uh, a pair of sets, 
a set of sentences, and then a target sentence. It doesn't actually have to be an argument. Um, and, and so really, even though, I mean, I said earlier that what we were concerned with was uh, deductive validity, but actually what we spend most of our time looking at is entailment. Um, we don't even worry about whether what we're concerned with are arguments per se. We're just interested in, you've got a set containing of a bunch, you know, a set containing a bunch of information. Um, do, does it entail or not entail these, you know, particular sentences? Um, and then if the members of that set are taken to be premises and the sentence in question is taken to be a conclusion, then what you're doing is you're looking at an argument and you're determining if it's deductively valid. Okay, the next concept that we'll look at is consistency. So a set of sentences is logically consistent if it is possible for all of them to be true at the same time. And if it's not possible for all of them to be true at the same time, then the set is referred to as inconsistent. So for example, two plus two equals four, Edmonton is in Alberta, my mom's name is Elizabeth. This is a consistent set. All of these sentences can be true at the same time. They all, in fact, are true all at the same time. Uh, I have no children. I have a son and a daughter. That's them, or that used to be them. That picture's pretty old. They're like much bigger and surlier now. Um, this, this is an inconsistent set, right? It is not possible for both of these sentences to be true. Um, logical truth and falsity is next. So a sentence is logically true if it's impossible for that sentence to be false. So all dogs are dogs. It is not possible for this to be for this to be false, right? Two plus two equals four. Um, mathematical. If you look at the way that mathematical sentences are defined, they're defined in such a way that it's not possible for them to be false, right? The way that two, two, and the operation of addition are defined, it's not possible for that to yield anything except four. So this is something that is logically true. And then a sentence is logically false if it's impossible for it to be true, right? So there are dogs that are not dogs. This is, it's not possible for this to be, not for this to be true for the same reason. It's uh, not possible for all dogs or dogs to be false. If a sentence isn't logically true or logically false, then it is logically indeterminate. So Edmonton is capital of Alberta. Some dogs bark, right? These are things that could be true. They might not be true. It's a matter of empirical fact whether they're going to be true or not, right? Logic doesn't tell you anything about it. Um, okay, logical equivalence. Two sentences are logically equivalent if and only if they're true in exactly the same circumstances and false in exactly the same circumstances. So for example, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a bucket of water. These are, I mean, the sentences mean exactly the same thing, right? Anything that makes this sentence true or false will also make this sentence true or false, right? These are logically equivalent sentences. Uh, likewise, there is a person with the same parents as me. I have a sibling. Again, these are logically equivalent, right? These are, you know, uh, any anytime this is true or false, this one will also be true or false. Um, okay, so those are those those are the basic concepts that we're going to be concerned with in this uh, in this course um, in general terms, right? And one thing to say, I mean. If we go back, let's go back, for example, to this, like, I mean, you may take this, like all dogs are dogs, right? Does that have to be true? Um, and you might start thinking, well, I mean, you can actually understand that in ways where it makes sense to suppose that, like, you know, all dogs are dogs, you could, or, or there are dogs that are not dogs. I mean, like, you could come up with you're writing a poem or something like that, right? You could have that mean something perfectly meaningful, right? Um, there are dogs that are not dogs. So you can you can say things that are true using that. Um, it's going to be literally false, of course, but you can still convey true information with it. Um, in order to um, in order for these notions to really be precise, right, you need to define them properly. And which we haven't done at this point, right? I mean, we're just sort of relying on these intuitive notions of, you know, it could be true, it could be false, right? They could all be true at the same time, et cetera, et cetera. 
in order to define these things precisely, what you need to do is you need to define them relative to a particular system of logic. And they're just different systems of logic. And what they do is they let you formally represent different aspects of language. So these different systems will do slightly different things depending on what it is that you're trying to represent. So what we're interested in here in this course is what's called classical logic. Um, and two of the you know, really distinctive features of classical logic are, the first thing is that it's truth functional. So the truth value of a compound sentence depends on the truth values of the sentences that it contains. It doesn't depend on the content of those sentences or it doesn't depend on the connection between those sentences. Um, what that means precisely is something we'll actually come back to in a little bit, right? So we'll talk about that a little more uh, later on. Um, another thing about it is that it's bivalent. Every sentence is understood as either being true or false, right? There are no, there are no in-betweens. You can't be half true. Uh, that kind of thing is just not allowed in classical logic. It's either true or it's, or it's false, right? Those are your only options. Um, and then the two systems that we're looking at in this course are uh, sentential logic, which, and these are the only connectives in sentential logic, or and, or not, if, then, and if, and only if, and predicate logic. And in predicate logic, you have sentential logic, and then you add in the operators all and some. Um, you can have other extensions on classical logic as well that add in other, other operators. So one really important one is what's called modal logic, where you add in uh, operators that stand for necessity and possibility. Um, so they say not just that a sentence is true, but the sentence is necessarily true, um, or that a sentence is possible, but not, uh, you know, without asserting that it's definitely true, right? You can assert that a sentence is possible. Um, those turn out to be uh, like extraordinarily useful for a ton of applications. Um, but that's a, you know, something that would, uh, well, it's, you know, an extension on this, uh, on this course. We don't cover those in this uh, uh you know, in this class. Um, okay, to come back to this. Uh, because of the fact that you have these different systems of, of logic, and when you define these particular concepts, right, you need to define them, if you're going to give them rigorous definitions, you give them rigorous definitions relative to the particular system that you're working with. And the result of this is you actually end up with slightly different versions of these basic concepts in the different logical systems. Um, so like, for example, take the sentence, all dogs are dogs, right? This is logically true in predicate logic, right? Like in predicate logic, this uh, it's not possible for this to be false. Um, in sentential logic, it's actually not a logical truth. And the reason is uh, sentential logic doesn't, uh, it doesn't include this operator all. So you actually just can't represent the internal structure of the sentence in sentential logic. And because of the fact that you can't represent the internal structure of the sentence, you can't actually represent it in a way that makes it come out to be a logical truth. Um, for another example, right, I said that the classical logic, right, the logic that we're working with is uh, bivalent, right? So every sentence is either, you know, true or false, and there's no in-betweens. You also have uh, systems that are, you know, sort of a range of systems uh, under like the, the broad category of what's called fuzzy logic, where um, you have intermediate truth values, right? So uh, on some of them, you have, um, like on the simplest versions of these, you've got three truth values. You have true, false, and then you have intermediate or one half, which is in between those. Um, on the mo most complex systems, you uh, you you have you you take uh, true to be one, um, so the number one is equivalent to true. Zero is equivalent to false, and then the truth values are the entire unit interval, right? All the fractions in between those, uh, um, uh, you know, between you know between and including zero and one are possible truth values that you can have. Um, so in classical logic, it's either raining or it's not is logically true, right? Because everything has to be either true or false. So either it's raining is true or it's not raining is true. One of those two sentences has to be true. In fuzzy logic, because of the fact that you have other truth values besides just true and false, this doesn't actually come out to be a logical truth. 
Um, it's raining could be half true if it's like, you know, spitting outside. Um, and it's not raining is also like half true. Um, and then it's either raining or it's not in, in that sort of case comes out to be half true. It doesn't actually come out to be um, a logical truth. So, so these are the general concepts that we're working with. And then the specific, once you specify what particular system you're working with, then you determine what exactly these concepts are going to mean in that particular system.